My name is Sarah Zellens and I'm working at the Research Center for Pharmaceutical Engineering in Graz. Today I'm going to talk about the machine learning approach to predict the formation of co-amorphous systems for inhalation therapy. Coming to the motivation and background of the work, lung disease such as asthma, chronically obstructive pulmonary disease and tuberculosis, they require a multidrug therapy. So it's quite usual and common that the patients take multiple different commercial products and uh, this leads to poor patient compliance. So the goal is to develop novel co-processed API combinations um, and thereby to reduce dose variability and to reduce the number of different inhalers or other medications to take. Um, this shall improve the patient compliance and another advantage of co-processed systems is that um, these co-processed systems act as one single system instead of two single APIs. This makes the and, um, manufacturing more economic and also formulation development um, easier. When thinking about co-processed um, APIs, we th thought about co-crystals or co-amorphous systems. Here we focus on co-amorphous systems. And so what are co-amorphous systems? They are described as homogeneous single phase systems comprised of two or more mo molecules through intermolecular interactions. Typically, an API is combined with a low molecular weight compound, the so-called co-former, that can be either another API or an inactive excipient. And the big advantage of co-amorphous systems is that they are stable systems. As you might know that usually amorphous systems, they are always, um, compared to the crystalline counterpart, um, more unstable as there is always the risk of recrystallization. But within a co-amorphous system, the two APIs are stabilized, so the system is stable. And here we present an approach, the development of a machine learning model to predict the formation of co-amorphous systems. This shall help in the screening phase before the experimental screening. So this will help to save time and cost. So the modeling workflow can be divided into three steps. First, data preparation, followed by modeling, and then the application. Each of these steps will be discussed in more detail in the next slides. Here's just to say that so far, um, machine learning models for the prediction of co-amorphous systems that were so far described in literature are limited. They are limited to a selected or specific kind of systems. For example, the formation of co-amorphous systems out of four APIs with just amino acids. And here the goal was to have a more general model. So we include examples from four classes. This classification is from a review from Liu et al. from 2021. So we have combinations for co-morphous systems of either API API, API amino acid, API organic acid, or API and other excipients. So first the data preparation. We did an extensive literature research and we collected data for reported co-morphous systems or non-co-morphous systems. For sure, we noted the two compounds that were tested, the molar ratio, the technique that was used, and also stability data were available, and also other um, properties of the, com of the new formed compound, if reported. And then we did an analysis for completeness of the data, and we saw that for a lot of systems, for example, stability data were missing, or there were vague stability data, and these examples were removed, as we also saw that with the first Excel data before data cleansing and evaluation, we had a quite poor um, predictability, most likely due to some of these cases. Also, we did a selection of one of multiple entries for the same system. For example, if for example one system was reported five times, um, and out of these five times, four times co-amorphous, only one time not co-amorphous, just with one technique or within a a certain molar ratio, then this outlier was removed. Then we split the data into training and validation data. And for both of the, um, the data sets, it was important that the, um, that the data are representative. So in both systems, training data and validation data, examples from all four classes were included. And we ended up with a training data set with 188 co-amorphous systems and 66 non-co-amorphous systems. Um, out of these, there were 87 individual compounds, 47 APIs, and 40 co-formers. The validation data set 
comprised of 13 new co-home office systems, eight new non-co-home office systems. So it's important that really the training data do not include these validation data. So it's that are new data to the system. Here we have 28 individual compounds, 13 APIs and 15 co-formers. And for all the individual compounds, we calculated molecular descriptors with a program called Modred. Um, this gives you around 1000 molecular descriptors, but we reduced the number of descriptors to around 30. Um, this was necessary as the number of available descriptors from Modred exceeds the number of test cases by a multiple. And so the parameters for the model um, cannot be trained sufficiently. So the, the model development can be divided in the model building and the mod model validation. For the model building, first we selected um, quite common or standard machine learning tools and tested them, the k-nearest neighbor, the random forest and the gradient boosting method. And we decided for the gradient boosting, it was more suitable for our training data set. And we did a training of 50 gradient boosting models in parallel and to average the predictions in the end, followed by a systematic optimization of hyperparameters for gradient boosting. And so this resulted in a predictability of 80%. And the model validation with the validation data resulted in a predictability and accuracy of 76%. Coming to the application, so we tested um, the predictive model with 35 APIs standard in the treatment of lung disease such as asthma, COPD and TB. We calculated predictions of API-API combinations out of these 35 APIs. And we ranked the predictions by the likelihood of success. So we used the combination of predicted class, so either co-homorphous yes or no. So co-homorphous systems are ranked, for example, by a number of one and non-co-homorphous by a value of zero. And for all systems, you get a value between zero and one. So the the API pairs with the highest number of predicted class are considered to be most likely co-homorphous. Then also important is the distance to the original training data set, as we saw that there are, for example, a few examples that are quite far away from the training data set. So we inserted a kind of uncertainty factor that includes the predictability and the distance from the training data set. And we selected the most, um, the 100 most likely combinations. And out of these, we are now choosing examples for lab testing, for experimental, experimental testing. And here we consider the therapeutic effects and combinations that are, they make sense from medical, medical or pharmaceutical point of view. Here is a bit in more detail the results. Here is an overview plot of the predicted score. As I mentioned, values between 0 and 1. 1 is um, co-amorphous and 0 not co-amorphous. And in blue, you have all the API pairs predicted as co-amorphous or not, so the application test cases. In orange, there are the validation data set, the non-co-amorphous systems, and green, the validation data, the co-amorphous systems. And you can see that most of the co-amorphous systems are predicted correctly. They are all centered in the upper part of the, of the axis. And however, there were several examples of non-co-amorphous systems that were falsely predicted co-amorphous. However, in our application, this is more favorable as, for example, if a system is predicted co-amorphous, it is likely to be tested experimentally, then in fact, it is not. If, for example, is predicted wrongly non-co-amorphous, it's likely that it will not even be tested and not be detected. And here are some examples of um, promising combinations that have been identified. So, for example, IGC and LABA or LAMA, they are mainstay of long-term therapy of asthma and COPD. Here we have, for example, momentason and glucopyronium bromide or budesonide and geotropium. Other is the quick relief medication, SABA and SAMA combinations, phenotyrol ipatropium. And for tuberculosis, we also have two examples for the combination of two first-line drugs. So these are, for example, um, systems that we will now test experimentally. Summing up, we can say that the machine learning model was built based on literature data to predict the potential formation of co systems. 
And important is that compared to previous models, the data set was extended to predict co-homorphous systems from four classes, API-API, API amino acid, API organic acid, and API other, with an accuracy of 80%. With the validation data, an accuracy of 76% was achieved. The applicability was tested on 35 APIs used in inhalation therapy, and promising um, API pairs were identified for the therapy of asthma, COPD, and tuberculosis. And now we are going to test these combinations experimentally. With this, I would like to thank, thank you for your attention and the FWF Science Fund for supporting this research and all co-authors. Thanks.